everyone, it's Jim. Back with another video. This time we're going to be making a diffuser for a Formula race car. We start out by making the buck. You can see my assistant there cutting these side panels and the center panel as a support. And then we screwed and nailed it down to this uh, platform. And the top surface is 8 inch thick plywood with a melamine surface so that it can have the curvature necessary. The side tunnels are 4 inch PVC cut in half. Then we put on two layers of wax as thick as we can and let it dry between coats. Then we wet out the surface of the buck with epoxy. Now we lay on a layer of fiberglass cloth and wet it out. This is 200 gram per square meter cloth. One layer on each side. They overlap in the center with the intention of giving a stronger central spine. Although it turns out that was not necessary because that part is supported by the frame anyway. So this is going to be a composite sandwich layup. In the middle is quarter inch thick plastic honeycomb. So we're wetting out the sides of the honeycomb and then placing them onto the sides of the, uh, the diffuser. Then we're going to lay uh, another coat, another layer of fiberglass cloth on top of that. There's the honeycombs for the center section there. And I'm spreading the fiberglass, uh, the epoxy all over it. it. While my assistant is mixing up more epoxy. Now we lay one layer of fiberglass cloth on top of the honeycomb, wet it out, smooth it down, and try to get uh, as much excess epoxy out of it as we can. Once again, they overlap on the center section. So most of the diffuser has one layer of fiberglass below the honeycomb and one layer above it. The center section has two layers below and two layers above. Now I'm putting the side tunnels into place, lifting up the cloth, and wetting out the surface, and then laying the cloth down against the top of the side tunnel. Now we put on perf ply, then breather material, then the vacuum bag. And the vacuum bag is nothing fancy, it's just what it looks like, a garbage bag. And it's glued down with duct tape. Now I'm sure that the people who sell you expensive components would like to tell you this is impossible. And we didn't get a very good seal on this, in fact, uh, because it was such a complex shape. So we spent a lot of time looking for holes and sealing around it to the point where it ended up looking like a duct tape factory. But eventually we got a reasonable seal. We let it cure overnight, and here we are the next day uh, removing the vacuum bagging materials. Taking a spatula to go around the outside. About this time I decided I better put on some gloves so I don't cut my fingers off. There we go. Now using also a 30 centimeter steel ruler to pry around the edges. And that wasn't good enough so I used a meter long steel ruler. Jam it all the way down there and that pops it off. There it is. So there's the finished raw shape of the diffuser. Now we have to make the strakes which go down the middle of the diffuser from the front to the back. These divided up into channels so that we can get a vortex going down each channel rather than just random turbulence all over the place. So we start by wetting out the table with the epoxy, put down a layer of fiberglass cloth, wet it out, and then lay down the pre-cut pieces of plastic honeycomb on top of that. I'll apply a layer of epoxy to those. And then one layer of fiberglass cloth goes on top of that. Now this epoxy is really thick. You can see it's, you could never do a resin infusion with this kind of thing. 
it's about the thickness of honey, so it wets out slowly, but eventually it does get wet. So in this layup, we just laid a garbage bag on top of it. We didn't use any peel ply, no breather material, nothing, just garbage bag, and then we seal the edges with duct tape. And that is, in fact, a drain from a sink that you could buy at your local big box home improvement store. But even with all these cheap materials, we got a solid vacuum right away. You can see how much that's being pulled down. We let it cure overnight, and then we debag it the next day. We left it under vacuum the whole night. Using my trusty spatula around the corners and edges. And then the one meter long stainless steel ruler. And it pops off. There it is. So not shown is where we cut this out on the bandsaw, cut out each strake, and there they're glued in place, just enough to hold them in place while we add fillets to all the inside corners. Here my assistant is mixing up another batch of epoxy. You can see how thick this stuff is. And what we're going to do now is make a putty of epoxy resin and micro balloons. Micro balloons are tiny, tiny glass balloons, microscopic size, like dust. And we mix them in with the epoxy, and they basically uh, mix air in with the resin. And we keep adding and adding and adding until it's so thick that we just can't stir it anymore. And that's just about right. It gives you something that's the consistency of cake frosting. So here we're spreading the cake frosting on the inside corners. Now, Formula 1000 rules require a maximum radius of one inch on these inside corner fillets. So I have a two inch diameter cylinder, which I run down the fillets to um, make sure that we comply with that rule. You'll see that in a second. Right there is my radius checker. And we try to clean up the edges as much as possible. And then we flip it over and we lay a fillet in above the side tunnels because these were a little too floppy and I uh, wanted to make kind of a triangular fillet in there and then lay fiberglass on top of that so that they would be stiff. Now we clean it up with a variable speed angle grinder and a flappy disc sandpaper wheel. Right here I discovered the hard way that micro balloons in epoxy can cause a bad allergic skin reaction. So I had a whole body rash for a few days that was very unpleasant. And for a while then, when, before I figured out that it was specifically the micro balloons in the epoxy, um, I was wearing a spacesuit pretty much with a fancy breather apparatus uh, anytime I dealt with the epoxy because I didn't want that to happen again. Here I'm laying a second layer, second coat of uh, the putty into one of the corners where it wasn't high enough quality. Now we're going to put a layer of fiberglass cloth on top of the fillets. So we get the fillets wet with the epoxy resin. We lay on the cloth, then we lay more epoxy resin on top of that to get it wet. And then we scrape, scrape off as much excess as we possibly can. We want it to be wet and nothing, no more than just wet, just barely wet. You want the minimum amount of epoxy at all times. So you can see why composite race car pieces are so expensive. There's a tremendous amount of labor involved in making one of these things. Uh, I'm not showing you even close to all of it. I'm just showing you a representative sample of uh, some of the, the steps that were involved. Now the fiberglass top layer has cured and we're um, going to sand off the rough spots with a variable speed angle grinder. And now we're going to cut a hole for the jack point. The, you couldn't, obviously couldn't just lift the car by pushing on the diffuser, so the um, bottom rear corner of the chassis sticks through the diffuser just enough for us to get a jack on it. I'm using a 14,000 RPM die grinder here with about a half inch diameter grinding stone and you can see it gets hot smoke 
and I'm also trying to control the dust so I have the vacuum right there running while I'm grinding. There's a test fitting on the car so that we could figure out where to drill all the holes. So now we know where all the mounting points are and it's time to add ears to the front corners of the diffuser to make the width match the width of the floor of the car. Also we're going to add a stiffening bar to the front of the diffuser which will be a honeycomb composite also. So we start by laying down the epoxy onto the table. The table's been pre-coated with wax and then we lay the one layer of fiberglass cloth on top of that and then two layers all the way across for the stiffening bar on top of the two layers of fiberglass cloth we're going to add the uh, a long, uh, long thin bar of honeycomb the edges of the honeycomb have been beveled so that the fiberglass will lay smooth around the uh, the transitions. So now the honeycomb's in place. We're going to lay honeycomb also in the ears. And then we're going to lay fiberglass cloth on top of that. And yes, that is Pit Girl wandering around in the background. Pit Girl says hello. Now we're going to lay two layers of fiberglass cloth on top of the honeycomb. Get that all wet with epoxy. and two more layers on top of the ears so that at the outside corners there are four layers on top. Next step is to stiffen the side tunnels. I decided those were too floppy and so we put on the fillets earlier and now we're going to lay fiberglass on top of the fillets and run the fiberglass all the way around the tunnels uh, to the edge. Two more layers of fiberglass cloth on each side. As you can see our light is fading rapidly here working as fast as I can. Oops, run out of epoxy. Time to mix up some more. You can see my breathing apparatus there. It's being powered by a blower which is about 30 feet away and a Tyvek suit which covers my whole body and nitrile gloves, thick industrial strength to try to keep uh, the epoxy off my skin. I thought I had developed an, an allergy to all epoxy. It turns out it was only the Micro balloons. So there's the finished, uh, almost finished version. Um, we made mounting points for the rear wing end panels by laying more of the putty on the upper rear corners of the diffuser and molding that to play to shape with uh, aluminum angle. So the aluminum angle fits perfectly on top of the putty, and then the angle will be the mounting points for the rear wing end planes. Then we added uh, seven layers of fiberglass to each of the mounting points to strengthen them up. Even though the holes are fully covered on this side, they're still visible on the other side, so when this is cured, we'll just re-drill the holes. So there's a whole bunch of bodywork which I won't bother to show you of sanding and filling and sanding and filling and priming and so on and then we have a top coat of epoxy that's black and here is the finished diffuser mounted on the car. You can see there are supports made of stainless steel guy wire, stainless steel turnbuckles so that it, the height can be adjusted and the stiffness can be adjusted and that uh, keeps it off the ground and has the benefit of when it's impacted, it won't push on the diffuser. So, hope you liked the video.